the richest of the rich have used these strategies for decades and decades. You don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to have a hundred million. You can literally operate more efficiently, just like the biggest name families that have built America. It's pretty exciting. Today, we have a very special episode for you. We are joined by Adam Ausluce, fiduciary financial advisor and tax consultant with over a decade of experience as a niche tax solution specialist. So we're going to get all in the weeds about taxes, personal finance, how to grow your wealth, life insurance, et cetera. So without further ado, Adam, welcome, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for some backstory, uh, Adam has, uh, we've known each other for several months now, I guess. And um, we are actually clients of, of Adam's because we believed in, in what he was telling us and, and everything that he had to say about, you know, um, a lot of financial services that are not really um, understood by the general public uh, or you know, many people haven't even heard of it. So we're really excited for today to kind of get started. Um, you've got a lot of history and experience in the tax specialist, you know, wealth planning space. When you meet people, what do you usually tell them? They say, hey, what do you do, Adam? What do you say? Uh, well, typically, um, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. So um, a lot of people think I'm running a charity. They ask me what I do. And I say, well, I help people help others. And they're like, what on earth does that mean? I'm like, well, I use my financial knowledge and niche tax strategies or solutions to empower my people, right? To have more financial resources to do what they want with their money, right? Do the greater good on earth for, you know, what's near and dear to their heart, you know, protecting their loved ones, um, different charitable causes, um, even putting money into their communities, right? So a lot of wealthy people have projects right? Whether it's in the digital world, right? Web3, which I'm just learning about, or, you know, what I'm used to is like the real estate world or construction yeah. projects or whatever it might be, you know, putting different, you know, infrastructure into the communities. So really that's what I do for a living, right? It's not just helping people mitigate tax or, or grow their wealth more efficiently. It's really what they do with the money is, is the important thing. Got it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 uh, a quote that came to mind just before we started here, I'm sure you guys have both heard it, is the the two things that are unavoidable in life are death and taxes, right? And I think that some people fear one over the other. In, in a lot of people's worlds, you know, the, the taxes are a terrifying thing. Um, and I think that there are a lot of strategies that the rich have that the, the many, quote unquote, um, aren't aware of. So, you know, in your experience, I guess you've probably worked with a quite a significant amount of very high wealth or high net worth individuals, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So um, typically, um, the, the, the specific trust that I offer people um, is kind of the foundation of the initial tax plan. Um, it's not new, right? The trust that I use is, is modeled after the Rockefeller's trust, which was uh, the Standard Oil Trust that started in 1867, hmm. right? So the richest of the rich, the biggest name families in America have used these strategies for decades and decades, right? I'm just bringing it to the future here, modernized it, right? With a law firm that's been issuing these copyrighted trust documents for 45 years. And I've created a model that I can help the self-made millionaire. You don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to have a hundred million, right? If you're self-made, or you have some new cryptocurrency wealth, right? And you're learning this entire new um, monetary, you know, opportunity, right? In the crypto world, you can literally operate more efficiently, just like the biggest name families um, that have built America. So, so it's pretty exciting. Adam, I want to cut in for a second because you you touched on something that I think is really important that we hear a lot. This was definitely my perspective, and you're one of the people that helped change this for me. So 
for people who are getting into crypto for the first time or or not even just crypto, honestly, but any kind of investing or starting a business or something like that, you know, the, the pandemic really brought a lot of that innovation out of people. Um, you know, I saw a lot more kind of startups pop up in my friend circle, people trying to get into other things with, you know, industries that really got hit hard. And there's definitely the perception that like, if I'm not making money hand over fist, just raking in hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars a year, that there is nothing I can do, you know, to help optimize my personal finance strategy, that like all of these tools, these things that you're talking about, that's, that's what they are. They're tools for billionaires. But like, you know, me, someone who worked for the government for many years and made less than a minimum wage for my entire career, um, you know, there's nothing I could do. Uh, and so that was something that I got taken by with, with someone like you telling me like, no, you know, you, this, you don't, any amount of money is worth protecting. Any amount of money is worth knowing how best to handle it. So what do you, you know, can you offer any kind of words of wisdom, I guess, to people who just think like, this is something that's totally outside of my reach because I'm not a millionaire. Right, right. So that, that is important. Um, you know, every client is different. Every client situation is, is different. Um, clearly tax planning and the things that I do there's setup cost, right? So I've always looked at it from a cost benefit analysis standpoint. So there's some clients that I might look at their situation and their assets, um, whether or not they're going to sell an appreciated asset and have a taxable event. Um, how many assets do they have that are maybe investable assets that are growing at what percentage rate, right? You look at you know the taxable situation for them at that moment, and then in the near term future, and if it makes sense. An economic, from an economic standpoint, to set up the trust and to to do the other parts of the strategy, you don't have to have millions and millions of dollars to do that, right? You might have one asset, one piece of real estate that you might want to sell at top of market right now. You've saved up, you bought a rental property a few years back, and you want to sell it at top of market. You might have a fifty to one hundred thousand dollar gain right in the current real estate market. Well, you can shelter that gain and defer that tax, and that would be enough of a economic upside, right? Not paying fifty to one hundred grand to justify putting the planning in place. The other benefits are substantial, from estate planning, right, eliminating estate tax, to ability to um, lower even income tax, right? If you have active business income, um, there's so many other benefits that make. Asset protection is another really big one, right? A lot of people use these trusts just for asset protection. You know, you you work really hard to have the assets. You want to protect them. So, so the safety aspect is a, is a big, big key as well. Um, so it's not just about growing your wealth more efficiently or deferring tax. Mm -hmm. Asset protection, estate planning, um, running your entire life more efficiently is really is really what the goal is. That's the first thing that caught me. I, 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 I'm not sure if you remember this conversation, but I think one of the first couple times that I ever spoke to you, you were describing these things to me and I've had two thoughts in my head. One, this is illegal. And two, uh, what did they, this like just came out last week. And then you were, you were teaching me about, you know, you know, how long have these practices been in place and just only used by several people, you know, certain people. And then really, and it's right there in your, in your title, the difference between how to properly, you know, protect yourself and defer taxes by using your money for different things versus this idea of tax avoidance. That's a common motif in and around the crypto space with the boating accident stuff, you know? Right. So I think that's a key distinction. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about that, the idea of, you know, making sure that you're repurposing your money to focus on growth and your business or, you know, whatever that is. And by doing that, protect yourself for now. It's not about like, hiding and avoiding taxes forever, which of course is illegal. It's about how to defer properly, how to set yourself up to make sure you're actually functioning with a plan. Because like someone like me, I had no plan whatsoever until I met you. Yeah. So let me make some a couple important points, right? So tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is illegal. So in the crypto world, because of the DeFi wallets and because of the way crypto works, there are there's the propensity for human humanity to want to hide assets, bit. right? To want to evade yep. taxes, right? What I do is I empower cryptocurrency holders not to have to even think about that, 
right? That's huge. I prevent people from going to jail, doing illegal things. I teach them proper tax avoidance, which is legal. And it's been being done for centuries, Mm -hmm. right? Since the 1800s, right? It's not illegal or unpatriotic to pay less tax. If you do the proper planning that's legal and you use the tax code, you're following the law, right? So that's one important point between tax evasion, tax avoidance. Big time. So when we first talked about that, I explained how the things work, that there is longevity. Um, There are certain tax strategies out there that Biden has, the Biden administration has attacked. And right now I don't offer them because it puts my clients at audit risk. Mm -hmm. What I'm using now, they're not on any, you know, IRS dirty dozen list or IRS hit list. Um, One important part about tax deferral is the government is going to get its money. They just get it later. And if you think about this, the government, right, they want you to be successful because if you defer tax on 100,000 and you turn the 100,000 into 100 million, you deferred the gain and now they're going to get their tax on 100 million at a later date, right? They're going to get more tax just later at a later date, eventually, right? That's what tax deferral is. So the government historically gives tax breaks to systematically kind of control where people put their money, right? So a couple examples, opportunity zones. So they want people to put money into depressed, underprivileged areas in real estate. So what do they do? They create an entire program. So people put money in the opportunity zones and they put their money in those areas for 10 years, right? To uplift those areas. Another example would be oil and gas. When America wanted to be more energy independent, they give bigger tax breaks for oil and gas exploration. And that's just what the government does. They change tax codes and tax breaks based on where they want you to spend your money. Here's the thing of beauty about what I do. With the trust and with all the different tax planning I do, I'm empowering my clients to choose what they want to do with their money, right? You don't have to follow where the government wants to put your money. You can literally have the power to improve your community, to you know, pursue what you think is going to make the world a better place. And honestly, that's the, that's the why I do what I do. I see it every day through my clients. My clients are absolutely amazing. Um, they have um, amazing projects that, that they're doing all over the world, um, locally in their communities. And it's, it's great stuff. I mean, it's one guy is looking at putting in an entire power grid um, overseas to help an entire community have a more stable power with his money. I mean, it's, it's pretty significant. Wow. Sure. So to me that, I mean, I don't know when, when you think of like what it takes to make it in this country, I think um, obviously you need to have a hard work ethic and knowledge of, of how the financial game works. But I think that the thing that's most hidden from people is the U S tax code. The, 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 the knowledge that's most hard, you know, most difficult to come by is how to avoid taxes because let's just be honest. Nobody wants to pay taxes. Nobody's like, yes, it's April, baby. Let's pay those taxes. You know, there it's, it's a bummer, but we have to, you know, have a country that has <laughs> sovereign lands and, you know, benefits for people. So that's part of the game. But, you know, I think the thing that separates the wealthiest, um, you know, top percentage from the rest of the masses is this knowledge, or at least relationship to people like you, who can show them how to navigate these tricky waters. Do you think that the government intentionally obfuscates, obfuscates the tax code for everyday people to make it more challenging to, 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 you know, keep some of their money? Well, it's interesting. If you ever go to the IRS and you ask them to produce and provide you with the entire tax code, uh, letter for letter, it, it's not that easy to get, you know, the mm. IRS handbook, you know, what the auditors have, mm. right. To, to get the actual handbook is not easy. Um, you know, most of the code is right on the internet though, but then you have to decipher it. Yeah. You don't necessarily know how the IRS is going to enforce it. Sure. So it's a challenging area. So one of the things I like to say is I'm not a CPA or a tax attorney, right? I'm a, a tax consultant. 
I'm a fiduciary wealth manager. I have a, a wealth management company, um, two separate companies, but I have decades of experience in this niche tax area. And it's really because I had some of the best mentors that taught me all of this, right? Art Jensen used to run the tax office for KPMG for years, right? He's one of the best tax minds in the US. He was my mentor. Hmm. That's where this all began back in 2014. So with all of these great people and meeting the right CPAs and really meeting the right uh, tax attorneys, right? The tax attorneys that are the you know copyright holders of this trust, it really allowed me to have the knowledge to share with people. Um, and that's that whole empowerment part of what we're talking about here today. You know, I can share my knowledge and help the little guy who I think needs more help than the big guy, right? They've already made it, right? So if there's a way to help that self-made millionaire or maybe even the person that is looking at a fifty dollars to $100,000 tax liability, which is significant in their financial world, right? It's a yeah. huge, it would have a huge effect on their net worth if they were able to keep that. Definitely. Um, that's really what I like to, to do. Now, the big cases are great. I love working on them. I think the biggest case I have right now is a business that's probably going to be selling in the next two years or so for three to four billion dollars. Right. So it's the really big guys, but it's also that person that might have a net worth of five hundred thousand to a million. Um, and they might just have one asset that they're selling. It could be a one off situation that it would justify looking at some planning options to help them out. So let's let's talk numbers because I was really impressed by this when we first started talking. Um, you know, if if there is somebody who's making 500k or or several hundred grand, I guess up to, you know, a few million or more, what kind of tax savings are they looking at by getting a trust with you? Yeah. So the trust itself right? will defer tax, right? It qualifies for tax deferral based on the 643B tax code. Okay. So um, any passive income flows directly into the trust, completely tax deferred. Any appreciated asset like real estate, a business, it could be, um, you know, digital assets that mm -hmm. are selling, cryptocurrency, investment assets, market traded assets, private placements, any of those asset sales complete tax deferral. So this how is long? state and federal deferral. So tax deferral with our trust lasts 22 years, but then you can re-up the trust for another 22 years. So it's in the perpetuity. Crazy. You, you can kick that deferral down the road for generation after generation. And, and this is exactly what the Rockefeller family did. That trust is still open, right? Wow. And one of the er errors or errorists of that trust I think she's worth 175 million just because she was born with the right name. Here's the other part. Now you go phase two of planning and you add an in insurance. Okay. And this is what the Rockefeller family did too. Every time a Rockefeller was born, they bought an, a permanent insurance policy. Okay. So when Rockefellers died, the death benefit paid off some of the deferred tax, right? And it passed other tax-free wealth on. So converting tax deferral into tax-free is just by adding that other component with, with which is different insurance. Now, mm -hmm. I personally use private placement insurance, which is very specialized and niche. I'm kind of the anti-insurance guy. I don't really like retail insurance because mm -hmm. the insurance carriers and providers, and they get all the fees, right? And you're growing your tax-free wealth at right. three to 6%. Private placement allows you to invest in anything you want. Cryptocurrency, real estate, gold, right? The fees on those policies are razor thin, like 50 basis points for the uh, M&E, the death benefit, right? Plus advisor fee, that's super low cost. So let's, let's, take, let's bring that back a little bit because that's a pretty interesting part too. So what we're talking about is with this trust that your company does, I don't know if you wanna say the full name of it, but there's, there's a lot to it. It's um, do you yeah. wanna say it? I, I can say it. So it's, it is. We might summon a demon after you say it, but <laughs> <laughs> just be careful. Okay, what. go ahead. It's five trust in one, right? So first of all, it's non-grantor. Bam. Irrevocable. Bam. Complex, discretionary, spendthrift trust. Bob. Five provisions. Okay. And you have to have all five. You have to have all five to qualify for 643B tax deferral treatment. If you just have an irrevocable non-grantor spendthrift trust, it will not have that benefit. Now, okay. can I really quick, I saw, 
I wish I could remember where I was reading this, but you know how that phenomenon when you like introduce something into your life and then you see it everywhere. Uh, and then you start to wonder like how many times have I just overlooked this? Cause I wasn't familiar. You know, like when I bought my Airstream, all of a sudden every trailer going down the highway was an Airstream. That's called your reticular activating system, by the yeah, way, okay. for anyone. I knew there was a term. Thank you. Um, so I had that when we met you and we found out about this monstrous, monstrously named trust structure, the, Irrevocable. I have seen that by itself in a lot of places. And I, I always mean to come back and ask you, is there a situation wherein you would want to break that down and, and use only one of the pieces? Or is that like somebody kind of misusing the structure or, or is that maybe just someone shorthanding the full name of it? But like, I'm trying to think, I can't remember the context that I saw, but it was someone with a trust that was strictly irrevocable and they had none of the other words. Yeah. So there's, thousands and thousands of types of trust out there, mm. right? Most of them are statutory trusts. Um, most of the trusts that are issued, the distribution model is through law firms, right? Law firms typically are going to do all these different types of statutory trusts, which means governed by state law. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you could have a Delaware trust, Nevada trust, Wyoming trust. They all have their own state advantages. They all do certain things, one or two things well, but they don't do everything well like our trust does. Our trust is a Swiss Army United of Trust, and it is a contract law trust, not statutory. It's not bound by state law, right? Yeah. So Say it's that again. That's really interesting. It, it's a non-statutory trust, contract law trust. The big difference. Now, a lot of law firms do not specialize in these. Even if they're fantastic estate planning attorneys or trust attorneys, they just don't play in that, that realm. Um, most trusts that are issued by law firms are grantor trusts. Ours is a non-grantor trust. So grantor trusts are the ones right now that are on the chopping block with the new uh, proposed tax law changes with the Biden administration. Mm. The only trusts that have been uh, audited in the last three years have been grantor trusts. Ours is so, a non-grantor trust. Interesting. Interesting. So, and, and to, to rewind on the thing you said just before that, if it's contract law, does that mean that the IRS has no jurisdiction because it's based off of contract? No, no? It, doesn't, it doesn't mean that the IRS doesn't have jurisdiction. It just means that our trust only files um, a federal tax return, not a state tax return. Oh, got it. Okay. So, so it's just our trust federal federal. files a 1041 uh, trust tax return with the federal government. Majority of the time, a K-1 could flow out of our trust to your 1040 personal tax return. Um, or it could actually um, be zeroed out where there is a zero return for our trust. It just depends on each person's independent um, you know, trust situation and taxable year. So then to <clears throat> harken back to Alex's answer, then you'd say, or question, you'd say that there's tons of trusts out there, but yours is, is what, got the most secret sauce or? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say that it, it produces... I'll just read through some of these benefits, right? Eight key benefits that our trust provides. Um, a lot of time when you go to attorneys, you might end up with three or four different type of trusts to tr attempt to get all of these benefits, mm. right? It's more complex, more cumbersome. And I try to keep it simple, right? And it's copyrighted too, right? Uh, correct. Uh, well, our law firm's work product is copyrighted and it's been it. uh, issued for 45 years. So um, a couple of the key benefits is complete discretionary control over everything. Remember when I said the, the discretionary provision of the trust, mm -hmm. the number one benefit, mm -hmm. people want full control over their money. And that's what the discretionary provision provides. Cool. Um, number two is asset protection. A lot of times this is described in the, the niche industry as titanium vault asset protection. Um, so this protects from creditors, lawsuits, divorce, government agencies, you know, other uh, will, Rest, uh, wealth risk factors. Uh, and that's really the spendthrift provision, right? So an example yeah. of that is OJ Simpson. He has a trust. It's not our trust, but he has a trust that has a spendthrift provision. And his deceased wife's family got a 40 some million dollar judgment against him. They have never been able to breach his trust and to get him to pay that judgment. So that's what you mean by titanium vault, because even if you have $40 million knocking at your door, they legally are not able to access 
the trust. Your assets. Yeah, the corpus of the setup. trust. The corpus of the trust is protected. Your assets are protected. Okay. Um, another benefit, number three, all passive income can be completely tax deferred, right? So we're helping to reduce income tax. Now that, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that is certainly the piece that I think is most like grabbing for especially people in the crypto most industry, people. right? Because you've yeah. got, I mean, we see it all the time, right? There's there's tons of people that push this idea that like, oh, well, I couldn't possibly sell my crypto gains because I don't want to incur capital gains. Tax. People are terrified of capital gains tax. They are. And the, the counterpoints that I always see are like, well, first of all, not even talking about how you can defer taxes through a structure like this, but just the idea like if you're making money, you know, don't be don't be scared. Don't let the t- fear of a tax stop you kind of thing. You know, it's it's all about just having a plan and having a strategy. I, so, I totally agree with that because I had several investments where I was like, OK, I think I should sell right now, but it hasn't been a year. Mm-hmm. So then I would try and get that long term, you know, not short term capital gains tax. And then I would wait the full year and, and it would I would lose so much money. I, I right. probably would have been better off selling it and paying the capital gains tax rather than waiting to see where it went after my right. one year, you know, jail time was up. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what happens, right? Like people are right. just, like, oh, I couldn't possibly pay the tax. And then they just watch their investment go straight back into the ground. Yeah. You know, with right. a lot of these high risk cryptocurrencies not having the longevity. So something like this can just add that other layer of security. It's so important to know about. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so think, think about that word empowerment, right? The trust empowers people to sell when it makes sense. Yeah. You know how many people we could have helped before the cryptocurrency market crash? Yeah. Millions, millions yeah. of people because they could have sold without fear of tax because number four actually is all capital gains are deferred on investments and asset sales. Wow. And I'll go back to three in a second because you brought up an important part with the cryptocurrency market. But yes, capital gains is a non-issue. You can sell when it makes sense with your cryptocurrency or even your real estate assets. People want to sell at market highs. Right. You don't want to wait until everything goes down. You don't want to have to wait for one year to go from ordinary income tax to capital gain rates. Mm -hmm. When you're in the trust, it's an asset of the trust and you can sell whenever you want. There is total tax deferment on your gain, capital gains. Tax That's deferment. huge. Yeah. Now for cryptocurrency people, number three, I said passive income. Passive income is staking income. It's rental income. Mm. It's royalties, right? Those are passive incomes. Those flow through completely tax deferred. So for all these staking people in your community, it's a great way to funnel that money into the trust completely tax deferred and not have to pay income tax, right? And then you add number four, we were just talking about no capital gains tax, huge. It's a huge thing. All right, so number five, right, is active income. So mm-hmm. active income is if you're running a business and you're, prof- you're either selling a, a widget or a service, getting a commission, that's active income. Mm-hmm. Now our trust has ways to work with LLCs, S-Corps, C-Corps, and we have ways to mitigate that active income, right? And that's the other more complex part of my planning, but that's another benefit that this trust provides. So if you're running a business, we can actually set you up with business trusts, or we can just simply let your business work the way it does. And in a lot of cases, if you want to talk numbers, we can decrease active income by 20, 30, 40, 50% in, in some cases or more. Significant okay. difference in income tax. Okay, so let me let me take a break um, just so we can kind of rewind for what we've talked about now because um, it's asset protection, which means it's extraordinarily well defended against lawsuits, divorces, etc. You defer taxes on any and all capital gains, correct? correct. Which means that you can defer it for twenty two years and then re up and then keep doing that until. You know, <laughs> who knows? Um, yes, yes. Long, okay. long past the cows coming home. Right. Passive income is also deferred, and passive income could be anything like royalties, staking income. You know, many in the crypto space probably already know what staking is, but if you don't, it's basically when you help secure the network by owning X amount of tokens and by owning it and or you know, designating it to a wallet, you get a passive return on that anywhere, usually from like three to, you know, sometimes in the craziness, a hundred plus percent. 
but generally it's in that single digit to low double digits. And we're finally starting to see innovation in that stake. Staking is kind of starting to change. I like to think that we're kind of helping push that that change. Just the idea of being able to like use your assets to get them to work for you. So like, yeah, yeah on the back end, when you're staking something like Polkadot, right? You're helping validate transactions on the network uh, or even the way that we are now uh, integrating a staking feature with teams in the corrupted games, right? Like you are taking your team, I guess you're kind of securing the game network, right? You're, you're putting <laughs> your, your team to work in the, in right. the you know, helping yeah. make, make data and generate fights and stuff. And then what do you get in return? So right. something that all of us are constantly looking for is I bought this token, I got this NFT, can I stake it? Yeah. If so where, and then how do I protect what I'm gaining from it? And in addition to that too, that would also be mining income, right? Yes. And then liquidity providing. Mm -hmm. So mining is when you have like a Bitcoin miner or, you know, a lot of people use the helium miners um, or liquidity providing is when you provide both ends of the coin. So, or both ends of the trading pair. So that would be like USDC and Ethereum. And for providing both of those equal parts of the liquidity pool, you get passive income in return. So all of that would be tax deferred and you can keep deferring. And then the active income part is the part where you'd actually have to pay taxes. However, with working with people like you, they'd be able to cut down the amount of taxable income owed. So if you made a million dollars, you know, without a trust, you might be taxed on a million dollars, which you would get just absolutely destroyed. Uh, so with a tax, you can cut that in 20, 30, 40, 50%, right? And then you'll be taxed on a much lower number, which could potentially bump you down a bracket or two, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's that's another really important part. So that active income, um, that's a little bit more complex and there's l layers right. of planning there, but that's definitely a part of the, what the trust can do. Um, and then you have the estate tax, right? So you really have capital gains, income, and estate tax. Those are the three main taxes, mm -hmm. right, that we're, we're going to deal with. So estate tax because the trust has its own tax exempt EIN number, all the assets are not attached to your social security number. So when you pass away, it, it eliminates that 40% of estate tax and it passes it on. So you're passing wealth to the next generation. This is why the Rockefellers did this back then. You know, they had, I mean, if, if they were alive today, they'd have more money almost than Elon Musk, right? It's significant monies. So that's another benefit. So, um, sorry, does that mean that if you don't have this trust set up in place and you have an asset worth a million dollars and you die, then the estate tax would take out 40% of what that's worth or uh, you'd be taxed for 40% of what that's worth before some, it passes yeah, on? Some, sometimes they call it the death tax. Right. And they give it a scary name because it's scary. Yeah. yeah. So if you had a million dollars, you didn't have any um, estate planning in place, right? Mm -hmm. You had no wills. You had no trusts, and this is not the only trust that does this. There's a lot of other estate planning trusts that will help you avoid estate tax, right? Yeah. This is just another benefit that ours does. Like I said, ours is a Swiss army knife of trust. It does all of these things yeah. in one trust. Right. So, yes, and, and you know, I had a sister pass away, and she had no planning. So we had to go through probate. We had to pay all the tax, and when everything was done, it's horrible. Going through probate is horrible. They have an executor of the estate, you know, that is getting a fee on the everything. And mm. when it's all said and done, it's hard enough on the family, but then nothing's left. Mm. Literally nothing's left. And you go through all the grief and it actually makes the, the grieving period of, of the loss of your loved one a lot harder. Right. So this is a very important part of anybody's wealth planning is do something. If, you're not, if you don't do with the trust that I'm talking about, do something for at least the estate planning part of it. What if it's a physical asset, like a million dollar house, right? Um, how would that work with the government taking out their cut of taxes? Would then they owe, you know, the, the person who it's bequeathed to, would they owe like 400 grand in taxes? Well, if, if there's a will, right? If there's a will, then the person that the asset is willed to, right? But if there's no will, if there's nothing, right, then in probate, the executor of the state, right, that would be appointed, yeah. would sell all the assets. Oh. And if there's nobody to give the assets to, the government's going to take their cut and 
it literally, it, it goes to nobody. Mm -hmm. Right. So this, this is something that has always jumped out at me, right? Cause I went through the same mental process. I've told you this where you're describing the services and the stuff that you can get these benefits and me being programmed my whole life, you know, thinking about like, Oh yeah, this is just what I do. I go to work and I make all this money. And then I send a large chunk of it to the government who gives me basically nothing in return. That goes back to what you were saying, Mac, you know, like I don't need to get, we don't need to get political, but I would feel better about paying taxes if we were like getting stuff, you know, like my grandparents, they pay significant taxes in Switzerland, but like, holy shit, the, the stuff that they get in return for yeah. their tax money, it's, you know, it's not even so here, just think about that for anyone listening. If you're listening to this structure, you're listening to this stuff Adam's talking about here and you're thinking to yourself, like this just seems sleazy or whatever. Think about this, right? Think about how sleazy it is that if you just don't have access to all this education, you don't know how this stuff works, and then you're just not perfectly set up, the government is just waiting to take your money away from you in right. any method that they can try to exploit. I mean, this, this estate stuff, like, it's your house, but you didn't 40, have to. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to take, they're going to take their, they're going to take their 40%. Yeah. Right. And then so family true. members are going to end up fighting for whatever's left. Exactly. So when you don't do planning, and oh. this is unfortunate, I've seen it with other clients where yeah. I had a financial advising client and they passed, but <clears> they never I kept telling them to do this, but they passed on an accident. It was a car accident and they were younger. Um, problem is, is the whole process happened. Government took their 40%. There was a little bit of money left over, maybe a hundred, 200,000. Okay. Now, brother, sister, mom, dad, everybody starts fighting over this little amount of money in court. And by the time they're done paying the attorneys, all the money went to the attorneys. Yeah. So doing uh, planning is very important, right? So do planning for when you pass away. Mm. But even more yeah. importantly, this trust allows you to do planning while you're alive. Yeah. And it comes back to, I think, this rising up platform that you have. Why are we even talking about this stuff? It's because we want to focus on the greater good, right? Right. I like you guys and I like you as clients because we have a similar mindset. Mm -hmm. It's looking at something bigger than ourselves, um, empowering each other through knowledge and financial resources. 100%. And if we can do that for the community of listeners that you have, you know, that makes me happy. You know, that actually gives me the yep. deeper sense of happiness. Um, and I know for a fact through my clients, seeing the great stuff that they're doing, that it's working. It, yeah. Every day yep. that I do what I do for a living, I see the greater good happening through each person's individual greater good pursuits. So the trust is just a tool to do that. And then you look at the private placement life, which is the tax-free component of all this. Mm -hmm. It's a way to then convert tax deferred money into tax-free wealth. It's a way to pull money tax-free out of the trust. You know, it's a way to, you know, um, really take care of almost unlimited resources going forward. Right. On so a tax-free tax basis. And I tell you what, insurance, insurance strategies will never go away. It's not going anywhere. It's a huge part of our economy. They have the second most lobby dollars in Washington, right behind, guess who, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical, right? And because of that, you know, if for some reason the tax deferral benefits of the trust would ever go away or tax codes changed or whatever, right? You can simply use the tax, uh, the tax treatment of insurance that's tax free as funneling corpus assets into policies to then instead of tax deferral have tax free treatment. So it's basically the backup plan to the plan. And it also covers many other things, right? It allows you to take tax free wealth out of the trust through the tax free loan provision. So there's some pretty cool things between the two elements. Um, and that's really the core, but there's more, you know, there's more to the planning that we do and more to the services that, that obviously I offer and then my other business offers. Um, to really yeah. focusing on that rise up premise that the, the whole concept that you guys are talking about. That's why I was excited, obviously, to you know come on your show today. Well, we I mean, this has been really great because there's just so much, you know, at the end of the day, whether people, you know, 
sign up with you and, and then get a consultation and, 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 you know, go forth with, with the amazing trust that you've created or, or just at least know of these options going forward, because some people might not be making, you know, a couple hundred grand, a couple million a year, but it's very important to know about this for the future. That way you can plan it, which I know is a core tenant of, of why you do what yeah. you do as well. The thing that I, uh, we haven't cashed in on this yet. Um, but it's certainly on the horizon. That's the life insurance. So, you know, Alex and I have been talking about what we've grown up hearing about and knowing about <laughs> and the difference between what that is and what the reality can be is staggering. So with life insurance, right, we all know the the uh, stereotype of the sleazy life insurance salesman that tries to get you to buy life insurance in case you die. Yep. Um, so that you can, you know, make sure your family's protected. Problem is nobody wants to think about themselves dying. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always and, a guy that you meet on an airplane, like on that quick hop over, like, what do you do? Oh, I sell insurance. And then all <laughs> you're like, no, I fucked up. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally went to a marketing event in Orange County when I used to live there. And I was in line to get a drink. And I heard this dude with a, with a suit on, you know, and he literally <laughs> said the words to somebody in front of me. It's never too early to start thinking about life insurance. And I was like, I'm out. I don't need a drink. <laughs> I'm gone. You know what I mean? I was like, there's yeah. no way I want to be anywhere near this guy. If he lays eyes on me, he's going to give me the pitch and I'm going to be stuck. Yeah. So anyways. And it's I, funny because my parents are the opposite of this. So like I've grown up, like my parents are the type of people that like, Hey honey, I'm going to run to the grocery store. If I die in the car on the way, here's where this is. Here's the, here's the where this is. Here's the password to this. Here's, you know, this <laughs> is the money person, whatever, you know, like they just, my parents just left the country uh, to go see my grandparents for a little bit. And I had to have orientation with them before they left because right. I was not going with them. And so, I mean, like, Oh, that's great. Planning is so important. Uh, and so that's one thing that I have grown up at least knowing, uh, that's which funny. is just to say, you know, if, like Mac was saying, if this if this whole trust thing is not where you are now, have a plan. Come yeah. up with some kind of plan. Talk to people like Adam so that they can tell you, you know, and help show you like maybe what kind of plan is right for you. Right. You know, because you know, there 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 are options out there for everyone. My parents never had the money to do, you know, some kind of huge big trust or whatever, but they were yeah. very focused on making sure what we did have was protected as much as possible. Right. And that's just crucial. Right. And, and you know what? Life insurance has a lot of great benefits to it, right? Sure. You just have to know what products are out there. So, so yeah, let's talk yeah. about that because yeah. I don't mean yeah. to interrupt you, but the, the, the question, the, the, the whole point of this, I think is, is a, is a, is a paradigm switch because mm -hmm. everyone thinks of life insurance as something that only becomes activated once you die. Yep. And the way you describe life insurance and the way I've seen a couple other people talking about it online is that life insurance is actually built for people while they're alive. And it has tremendous benefits like you were talking about with tax free and everything like that. So let's say I sign up for private, place, private placement life insurance. What can I then do with the money that's, that I've put in this life insurance policy? There's term insurance and there's cash value permanent insurance, right? A lot of different types, a lot of different products out there. There's retail insurance, which is all the big names, right? These are the policies that have a bunch of commissions on the front end. They have trails on the back for the salespeople. And then they have all of the fees for the provider, right? When you add up all those fees, it's a ton mm. in retail insurance products. Retail for most right? people. Saying, yeah. Right. So that's why you're only growing your tax-free wealth at a smaller percentage, maybe three to six, right? Which is good. It's tax free growth, but not when not inflation is nine and a half. Yeah. It's not the yeah. best. And then there's institutional type insurance, private placement, where you literally can build your separate account and investments into anything you want. So the fees are a lot less. Like I said before earlier in, in the segment, 50 basis points with an advisor fee, you're looking at maybe 2% total. You look at retail insurance, you're looking at five, six, seven percent total in cost, maybe more. Can you explain that? So when when you say 50 basis points, you mean 0.5%, right? Plus right. the advisor fees, that's two percent. But what is that coming from? Like, do I pay two million and then I get taxed, you know, two percent on that each year? Or are you talking about the money that I take out to then use? The annual fee. 
So basically the annual fee of the policy. So let's say the policy makes 10%. You have to deduct the annual fee and that's your net return of what you're growing your, uh, you know, your net worth. And right? that 10% would be made from investing in things like the stock market, correct? Right. Well, retail products are typically indexes or you might have a dividend-based company, like a mutual company. Okay. okay. So either based on a dividend or based on index, you know, index type policies. Um, there's some other, poli- there's a lot of different insurance products out there. Um, and this is not really a product conversation, but just to differentiate, you have retail and then you have more of a wholesale or institutional type product. Now, to get back to your question about building, using insurance while you're alive is you can use it as a wealth building tool. Right now, with my type of policy, you can invest in anything you want, cryptocurrency, NFTs, real estate, gold, like private placements that are non-market traded, even in market investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever. Okay. So you have full, full power to invest in whatever you want. It's open architecture. So that now is an, another thing, empowering you to decide, okay, if I build a portfolio that can make 20% a year, you deduct 2%. And now you just made 18% tax free. Mm. So that value is why insurance can be very powerful while you're alive. Now, Mm. retail products are fine. You can do that and you can grow your net worth at three, four, five, six percent tax free. It's still a benefit while you're alive. But there's some barriers to entry. You know, each product has different barriers to entry, and not everybody would qualify for private placement life. And then there's you know different conversations that need to be had. But knowing that you have tax-free vehicle like insurance products, the two work better together than apart. And I think that's just the important part for for this segment to understand that that's the plan, right? And you just have to figure out which one's right for you, which ones you qualify for, which ones fit your goals and your, your risk levels and profiles and go from there. Is there a limit or like a starting point that you'd say is kind of generally accepted for getting into life insurance or or private placement life insurance? You know, like, do you need a million for it to make sense or 2 million? What's the number? Like in general, um, there's different insurance products where if you want to insure the trustee or insure the life, yeah, um, you could do term. It's inexpensive. So you could start with that insurance product or you can start with retail insurance products, Mm. right? Or bond funded, or premium finance type insurance, or private placement life, which I think is really where you'd want to get to. In my opinion, it's designed for the best interest of the client because it's the lowest cost with the most flexibility investment. Now, to answer that question, typically the carriers um, are going to have a minimum amount of premium of about two million over okay. a three to seven year period, right? So there's that little bit of a barrier to entry. So you might want to start with a different product. And then you can do an insurance exchange of the other permanent insurance into private placement where you're not losing your cash value. It just converts over to the other policy. So the insurance path might take a couple steps to get to the private placement if you're not at that financial level, right? So I think that's kind of the way to do it. You know, this kind of makes me think, you know, something that Mac and I learned getting into this whole thing, you know, I, it's too bad we didn't have you, uh, on our, on speed dial before we got to this point, but you know, figured it out and, and then people can learn from this when you're starting, no matter what point you're starting at, you know, kind of have those milestones planned out, you know, like say, so what am I going to do when I get to my first hundred thousand? What am I going to do when I get to my quarter million? What am I going to get to when I get to what blah, blah, blah. And, and so someone like you would be able to kind of help come up with, you know, what are those milestones? You know, maybe it's not the exact structure that you specialize in, but like, I'm sure that you know, you know, what the best way to kind of set yourself yeah. up for success getting down. Absolutely. I mean, I could say, look, I'm going to refer you out to this person for now, right? It's important mm-hmm. to go get this, this for you, because this fits what your goals are, right? right? You're worried about not passing tax deferred wealth onto your loved ones, right? Your legacy. Okay. Well, let's ensure your death, Mr. Trustee, so that you have enough death benefit to cover the deferred tax. Mm -hmm. That way, if your family decides to dissolve the trust and pay tax, they can do that without having that 
big tax bill, right? So it just depends. And you're absolutely right. Every single client's different. Every financial situ- situation's different. But I've been doing this stuff now since the specialized niche tax planning since 2014, mm. right? I spent big, I spent, you know, time in the big warehouses, the, the super independent wealth companies. And now I have my own independent uh, wealth business. Um, but it's through the decade or almost, you know, decade and a half of being in an industry um, in, in these areas, um, it really just teaches you what all the different products are. And then, like I said, I'm kind of an anti-insurance guy because I break down every product to its simplest form. Mm-hmm. I want to know what all the costs are, who gets what, and then what value is being issued to the client. And once you break down financial instruments or insurance products to their simplest form, it's easier to understand them. And then for me, at least, I'm a fiduciary advisor, which means act in the best interest of a client. I bring the same principles to even tax consulting because talk about the strategies that are in the best interest of the client from day one. Of course, yeah. And you have to understand what's the most important to them. Maybe deferring tax with the trust is not the most important thing. Maybe it's asset protection. Mm. I have clients that literally said, hey, I got a certain situation coming up. I need to protect my assets. So let's get the trust in place prior to a potential event that they think might happen to protect assets. And we can do that specifically for asset protection. Hmm. It really just depends on what's important to them. You know, and I, I could go through a couple examples as well, uh, just kind of case study examples of people have helped out if, if you think that might be, you know, helpful for the listeners today. Yeah, I think, um, and Mac, if you have a different, I think that could be kind of a nice way to, to sort of wrap up. And something that has kind of jumped out at me through the course of this conversation is, you know, in, in, at Faceless, with the stuff that we talk about, you know, there's a big focus on Web3. Mm-hmm. And that's a hotly contested kind of controversial topic inside of its own community because there is no really such thing as web3 it's sort of an idea it's a marketing tactic it's it's whatever people generally interpret it as just all crypto and nft is just web3 i would i would make the argument that a lot of stuff that you're talking about here today adam is web3 because it's designed to give you the user more control over your stuff yeah. over your life over your assets so even if you're using traditional financial vehicles to protect and empower yourself, I would argue that that's more Web3 than a lot of crypto and NFT shit that we see out here. Yeah, let's get the spirit of Web3 for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What, are, what are we ultimately doing here? We're trying to figure out how best to protect yourself and put more of your financial control in your hands instead of someone else's. That's the that's TradFi to me. It doesn't matter what medium we're using, whether it's you know a US dollar or Bitcoin. You know, if you have control, I think that's more web three. I just think that's kind of it's kind of interesting. I w- maybe yeah. that's a hot take, but that's what I yeah, would say. It's, it's it's funny that you say that because if you use the trust, you're really decentralizing yourself off of your social security number mm. onto the trust's tax free EIN number. Mm. Right? It's the whole decentralized idea. It is kind of web three, right? It's the yeah. anti status quo. They don't teach this stuff. Sure. Even if you go get a finance degree in college, they're not teaching you this stuff. Right. The Rockefellers have been doing Web three before it was cool. <laughs> Since the yeah. a full century yeah. in advance. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the anti status quo type solutions. It's unique things that um, really do empower people. Um, like I said, that control factor is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the significant um, the significant benefit I've been able to do for people. Um, I can actually go through a case that just happened. Sure. Uh, Yeah. Literally literally just set this thing up um, a few months back. So I got a call from a guy that I've known for three years and very wealthy guy, been in real estate for 30 plus years, has a pretty big real estate portfolio, about 50 million. Okay. Calls me up um, or I think he replied maybe to an email that I sent him and he's like, I need your help. I got these situations coming up. I have a bank note that's being called due in July. They want me to send them $670,000 additional cash because I don't have 
um, it fully rented out and they're saying the property is not worth as much. So because of that, I, I need to send them 670 grand. Okay. Well, this guy wanted asset protection, but he also had a commercial real estate building being sold in July. And that was going to create even, you know, a couple hundred thousand tax. So for him, um, we worked on the trust. It took me a week and a half. And I, I'd set the entire trust up, concierge service. We got all of 50 million assets protected in the trust into the corpus of the trust. And we did this all before so that when July came, we actually saved him $780,000 in just the month of July, right? Not bad. So my total cost was a fraction of the 780, right? And then he has all the benefits that if he ever sells any of that 50 million in real estate, completely tax deferred. Now get this, the passive income was over a million dollars a year. And in Wisconsin, he was paying $420,000 in tax, income tax on his rental income. Not anymore. So every wow. year we save him 420000 in income tax because it's passive income. I saved him $780,000 just in July. I did a cost benefit analysis. If he grows the corpus of his trust by 6%, we're saving him $3.8 million or so over um, a five-year period, right? And then we did some 10-year numbers. We, we played around with numbers. If, you know, what if he's growing the corpus at 10%? The numbers were absolutely huge on the economic upside for this, for this guy. And he literally said, why didn't I meet you 30 years ago? Well, first of all, I've only been doing this, you know, for 10 years or so. Um, but that's a very highly intelligent guy that has been a real estate broker running a yeah. successful business and investor for 30 years to amass this wealth. And he's been paying all this tax all these years. So that's just one example of how powerful this trust can be, right? And how early we are. And, it's, and he never heard of it. And guess what? Too good to be true. Is it legal? Every day of my life, yeah. those are the two big objections that I have. And it's like, <clears throat> as long as you're open-minded, let me educate you. Yeah. Let me get the right CPAs and attorney and explain the details. I'll talk about concepts. I help implement, you know, the processes. I help understand and listen to what you want and what your goals are. And then I'm, I'm really basically like that VIP concierge service guy. You know, Very I'm cool. here to help. And the, I take a lot of pride on that case. That case was absolutely amazing. The benefits that I did for him and his family, religious guy, charitably inclined. I've just empowered him now with millions of dollars every year extra that can be donated and used for his greater good. I actually took uh, a percentage of my fee and donated it to his church as well, right? Just to show that I'm aligned with what he cares about. Yeah. So that's a really cool case. And that just happened a couple months ago. That's this awesome. year. Um, that, think, that, uh, it's too good to be true and it's illegal. That was me when I first met Adam. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And I tell you what, I, I tell you this example because it's not too good to be true. Right. This is, yeah. this is literally the outcomes and benefits that I provided for this individual. Um, and there's many, many other people, uh, many other case studies and sure. many other examples I could share. Um, even in the, in the cryptocurrency space, one that I'm really happy to, uh, to work with was a police officer in Milwaukee, actually a homicide detective. And he really amassed a pretty good chunk of cryptocurrency wealth. So he came to me and on our first conversation, he's like, you know what, Adam, I just want to protect my assets because I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband or he wants to be a better husband. And I'm in a line of work that has some risk to it. So I want to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And then in conversations, I find out that he's charitably inclined and he has all these greater good concepts for his loved ones. Um, for him, the outcome was pretty significant as well. He was literally thinking, and this is a law enforcement agent, a law enforcement officer, right? He was literally having questions whether he should report his DeFi gains or not. And I said, you don't want to do that. You're a good guy. That would jeopardize your family. Let's put the trust in place. You can report all your gains to the IRS as deferred gains. You don't have to hide them. 
You can move them from DeFi wallets over to the you know, other bigger exchanges. And let me protect you from tax evasion. Mm. He was so thankful to be able to have, to not even have to think like that to protect his wealth. No, let's protect it legally the right way and allow you now to, if something happens to you, you know that your children and your wife is taken care of with the trust. And he's a, he's a little guy compared to the other story, but I got just as much joy and happiness from helping him that I did the $50 million real estate professional. That's such a big thing, you know, because people it's, it's, it's multifaceted benefits. You can be a goody two shoes with the IRS, report your taxes and your capital gains until the cows come home, but then not have to worry about tax liability because you can defer it <laughs> for decades, if not more. Right. That's just huge. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, I love those stories. And, and, you know, I, I think that the, the tax deferred the tax deferred is cool enough on its own, honestly. For sure. But then when you add in the life insurance stuff, once you get to that level, once you get to that, you know, well, I guess there you said there's multiple levels of of life insurance, of course, but when you get to the top level, that seems really cool too. And one of the things I, I wanted to mention is in that life insurance policy, you can also take money out of it, right? And use it for anything you wish at a very low interest rate, correct? Right. So the, there's tax-free loan provisions with most insurance policies that are permanent. So that's a way to pull money out tax, you know, tax-free. And that way you um, don't have to sell your assets. They can keep appreciating. This correct. is what the rich do to stay rich. Take it out as a loan. Um, and then even the trust has a loan provision to it. So you can take out money on a loan provision out of the trust as well. So wow. there's a couple different ways to take money out of the trust uh, without paying tax, right? Um, you as a trustee can decide to take taxable distributions if you want. Mm -hmm. if you, you have full discretionary control. So if you want to take 60 grand out and decide to pay tax on 60 grand, you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you think that makes you more patriotic, or if you think that is you know something that you want to do uh, to take the IRS heat off of you or something, uh, I don't agree with that concept, but some people do, then you can do that. You yeah. can decide to pay as much tax as you want to, or you can use me to help you maximize the benefits of the trust to the letter of the law. So use our CPAs that are qualified, use the attorneys and get your legal and tax advice from them and you can maximize your benefits. So it's really up to the client to use these strategies as aggressive or conservative as they, as they want to. Got it. Well, Alex, I don't know about you, but um, you know, I, I feel like we've, uh, Every time we talk to you, Adam, we we learn more, um, yeah. and it's yeah. uh, it's really exciting to hear about this because Alex, I think that's a great point. You know, the whole this is Web three. This is the spirit of Web three. You know, putting the money and the power back into the hands of the people who dare to believe, who dare to take a step into the Web three world, yeah. and more and more people are discovering the ways, whether crypto, NFTs or beyond like tax yep. planning and, um, you know, proper accounting to change your financial circumstances and, and rise up. So, um, I don't know, man, I, I think I, uh, I think I, I really enjoyed this one. I think people are going to get a lot of benefit from it from like a high level overview. I'd say that what the takeaways from today are that you can legally defer your capital gains, taxes, your passive income, um, and was there something else? I, I know you can, uh, you know, drastically reduce the amount of active income. gains. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, income I should say. And then, you know, you can also come by tax free wealth via life insurance. Um, and it's all and, kind of on a, a spectrum that you can kind of build up towards protecting so, your assets too. I mean, we have so many people entering the space now who now have an asset portfolio for the first time with these digital assets. Yeah. And there are ways to protect them. Right. Which is which is crucial. Yeah, the, and on the top of that, you know, you build your legacy, you pass it on to the people that that you love and you know, you're you're set in that way. It's just a it's mind blowing that this isn't more common knowledge. But again, we thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your expertise and knowledge with everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me. And if I can just if I can help other people help others through this. And I reach more people, then it's great. You know, this is a great use of my time and um, my knowledge. And I'm, I'm just really thankful for you guys having me on today. 
So Adam, before we sign off, was there anything that else that you wanted to touch on or, you know, tell these people how they can get in contact with you as well? Yeah, not a problem. I, I, I think, first of all, just do something. Now, you know, this stuff exists. Protect yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You know, think about it. Talk to professionals um, in your local area. Um, but if, if you have certain circumstances that you think that I could help you with, um, pretty easy to get a hold of me. It's um, defernow.com. Right. That's tax deferral services website, Adam at defernow.com. And you can call me as well at 414-269-2600. Well, Matt. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you again, Adam. Thank you to my co-host, Alex. Until next time on Rising Up. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Rising Up. Hey, before you go, I've got a quick favor. Would you please take a second to leave us a rating and a comment or quick review? Aside from listening, it's the most important thing you can do to help our show, and we really appreciate it. If you want more from our team, be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Faceless Many. That's where you'll find the link to our Discord server and all the latest updates. If you'd like to be on our show, if you have questions for our team, or if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, send us an email to hello, that's H-A-L-L-O, at facelesscrypto.com, or Get in touch through the contact form at our website. Thanks again for listening to the official podcast of the Financial Revolution. Until next time, rise up.